Yeah, hello everyone. Um, again, my name is Dr. Joe Demian. I graduated from life in 1997, um, and from then on in, I pretty much have been practicing since. Um, I recently uh, sold a practice and reopened a new one, and I reopened it with using the Neuroinfinity as my main diagnostic tool. Um, and it has drastically changed the whole conversation of the office. Um, you know, my previous practice was a subluxation-based practice, and we had family practice, et cetera. But the interesting change in dynamic from this practice to the last practice was, or should I say is, the amount of families where mothers, uh, fathers, telling me that not only do their aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, neighbors need to be under care, but more importantly, their kids need to be under care. So we really repositioned the office by just giving people a new definition of, I, I wouldn't even call it a new definition, a more clear definition as to what it is that we do every day. And that's really what I want to talk about today, showing how we use this equipment um, and how it changes the conversation in the office and how, how it changes uh, the patient base in the office. It increases compliance and increases um, the amount of referrals we're getting to the office. Um, we've opened this office in April, and this is not to impress. Numbers don't impress anyone. I, I realize that. But uh, in, without any outside marketing, we've started up over 230 patients since April 15th. And, um, and, and outside marketing, it didn't happen that way on purpose. Um, when we opened the office, as everybody knows who opened an office out there, that uh, sometimes things get away from you. And from the moment we opened the doors, um, because we were a little late on the build out, et cetera, or a month late than we had planned on opening, um, we just finally just said, let's open the doors today. I'm sick of not being open. We were supposed to be open last month, et cetera. So we opened the doors, and then bang, zoom. From that point on, we've been hitting the ground running, and um, you know, we almost don't have time to do the outside stuff as much as we'd like to. So hopefully 2010, we can get a little more outside. But we've started up over 230 patients in the interim. So that's phenomenal. So I'm, I'm very blessed and happy with that. But it is how we're communicating that is the key. So let's go on and talk about that for a moment. So let me just hide this. OK, so we all know that the nervous system controls everything. And that's how we speak to the patients in the office as well. Um, everybody kind of knows that. That's a no-brainer. But really what we want to talk about is the nervous system's ability to coordinate the different systems. So as I say to the patients, you know, we all know that, that the nervous system controls heart, kidney, liver, spleen, stomach, intestine, lungs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it's also controlling muscle activity and joint position. So basically, the brain is this, is this organ that sits in this dark cave called the skull. And all its information is through, primarily through sensory fibers. So it has to turn around, and it has to coordinate all these different things simultaneously and then add motion to that, well, now we've got you know, a brain that can be very overloaded. And then all of a sudden, we start to see all these conditions happen. So when we, when we speak to the patients during the doctor's report, et cetera, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss two fundamental concepts. What is health? What is disease? How chiropractic fits into the spectrum? And I just got done with uh, a doctor's report about a half an hour before I got on this call. Um, and it was a pretty interesting conversation that took place. And never underestimate um, what people do know and don't know. So that's one little tip that I tell you. So we go on and everybody gets a copy of this after the doctor's report. You can get a better understanding of how the nervous system works. The next thing we talk about briefly is, is this normal versus abnormal. So when we're talking about normal versus abnormal, I don't really even talk about the spine. And I know that's taboo for certain people out there. Um, but really, if we're doctors of the nervous system, how I communicate this is basically we just use the spine, sometimes the extremities in some cases, as a gateway, a portal of entry into the nervous system to invoke change and balance. Once we've established a balance in the nervous system, not only are you more synced up with your heart, liver, kidney, spleen, stomach, intestine, lungs, et cetera, but you also have the ability to affect the postural component of your nervous system. So even when we're talking about posture, because those of you who do x-rays, and I did x-rays for my first three years out of practice, um, what we're really talking about is the structural end product of nervous system distortion. Because ultimately, those of you who take x-rays, when we're showing an x-ray, you know, you've lost the cervical curve, et cetera. This leads to increased pressure on the spinal nerves and the spinal cord, et cetera, which leads to disease. But I would make a, a, a pretty good argument that the loss of cervical 
curves, change in posture, degeneration, are all just yet more symptoms of an abnormally functioning nervous system, just as heart disease is, um, low back pain, cancer, digestive disorders, all of these are symptoms of the nervous system which is improperly functioning. It's in chaos. So when we're looking at this, I go on to explain, because when, when I suspect x-rays, they're a great tool, but it just shows you how long the person's kind of been in that condition on a structural component. Because everybody tends to always ask, well, how did I lose that cervical curve? Yeah. So we really, our, our previous definition is basically, well, you're a, com you're a combination of your life, birth trauma, you know, physical, chemical, emotional stresses, et cetera, have led you to who you are today and your loss of curve, which is causing disease. No. This nervical in nervous system interference, which has been maybe since day one, maybe prior to day one, maybe since the day of conception as your body grows in this stressed environment, in some cases of the mother, causes a, a stressful program to be written in the nervous system. Therefore, all things are all altered, including posture. It's just that when the posture is involved, it leads to degeneration, which is something we can measure on an x-ray. But let's get the focus off of the structural component and get back on the nervous system component because it's not really tangible for people to sit here and say, okay, because I've lost my cervical curve, therefore I have heart disease, I have cancer, I have dis digestive disorders. No, all of these, including the loss of cervical curve, are all symptoms of a nervous system that's in chaos. So we show this just for that aspect. We want to show that, listen, after this whole, after the postural abnormalities that, you, that are taking place and it causes degeneration, it's almost going full circle. So the nervous system disorder happened. It changed everything internally, including posture and structure. That structure starts to change and deteriorate, and then it falls back on the nervous system. So it's like a self-perpetuating loop. So let's talk about how we got into this disarray in the first place. So we go on to the next screen here which, for whatever reason, my screen isn't changing. There we go. Oh, oh. Okay, so let's get back to that bone on nerve principle for a second. And this is uh, Dr. Chung Han Su, who did the research study where, um, you know, we all got the, it takes 70 millimeters of pressure or whatever it was, the weight of a dime to decrease nerve flow by 70%, somewhere along those numbers. But what he went on to say was really that the physical force of the adjustment did not directly cause a permanent change in the position of the vertebrae. So during Chung Ha Su's research, he couldn't biomechanically twist the spine enough. He had to remove it from the body to actually twist it enough to actually compress the nerve. So we got a little up in arms about this. And what do you mean the physical force of the adjustment doesn't change the permanent position of the vertebra? But nobody really paid attention to what he went on to say next. He went on to say the adjustment served to stimulate the brain and the nervous system. And then in turn, the nervous system, which exerts control over the body's muscles and joints, caused a permanent movement in the bone to take place. Now that's a more realistic understanding of why we get the results we get chiropractically. So not only are we changing through accessing the nervous system, are we changing bone position, but we're also accessing that nervous system to put it in a state of ease, therefore allowing this nervous system to have the ability to control and coordinate every system of the body, not just the musculoskeletal system, the digestive system, the respiratory system, the, the cardiovascular system. All of these systems are under the control of that nervous system. So as long as we put the pro appropriate amount of force in, in the appropriate direction to make that correction, what happens is not only do we affect structure, but we affect everything else as well. And that's why chiropractic works. And the funny thing is, your patients will get this. My patients get this frequently. They say, that is the great information of chiropractic I've ever heard. Now I understand. So you're not making that leap of faith from an x-ray to causing disease. And you're explaining that all of these are symptoms of the nervous system when it's an inability to control and coordinate. And I, I just keep saying this word. And I keep saying it during the report as well so that people understand what it is that we do on a daily basis and why it works and why their children need to be under care. Because most of them say, hey, you know, John, where, where, are, your, where are your kids? You know, it's been a month. You know, you, you really love this care that you're receiving. But where are your kids? Ah, they don't have pain. And I say to myself in the previous practice, well, I don't understand in my mind, my inner dialogue says, you got it enough to commit to care and you saw the importance of it, yet you think you're, it's back to back pain and, you, and, and neck pain in your eyes. So now, when I'm done with the report, I don't have to ask people where their children are because they say, I need to get my child tested, I need to get my neighbor tested, et cetera, et cetera.